A very good evening to you. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Sports Tonight. It's um, a Thursday night, and uh, it's time for us to take you on a journey around the exciting, fast-paced world of sports. I promise you that by the time we are through with this show, in 50 minutes' time, you would have enjoyed yourself, we would have updated you, and you will be better informed about what is going on, not just around you in the world of sports. You will also have a touch of what is going on across the globe as it concerns sports. So thank you once again for giving us this opportunity to be a part of your night. My name is Tony Ibitoye. I'm not alone. Um, starting off the show with me, this Thursday, uh, Doom Nadio Konta uh, will be here. And um, let me welcome Doom. Doom, let me welcome you um, to sports tonight this, um, this Thursday. Yeah, good evening. It's my pleasure. Mm. A lot is already, already happening. Um, first coach to be fired in the second round. That record surely, or indefinite suspension, because indefinite suspension may not be a sack. The coach that uh, the coach that were placed under indefinite suspension in the first round, some came back, no, some didn't come back. back. They, they, they came, came back, back, and then they were fired eventually. Okay. Talking about um, Zakari Baraji and uh, Imama. Imama, but another coach has been placed on indefinite suspension now. We'll talk about that extensively later on on the show. Uh, that's the story of coaches anyway. We are told that there are two types of coaches, those who have been sacked and those who are waiting to, to be sacked. Is that a true story? You will find out as we go along. So Dumnadi will be uh, giving us a lowdown on all of that as well um, later on uh, on the show. We will also spend plenty of time tonight to look at what is going on in Nigeria. There's a lot of controversy going on around our football, uh, particularly the executive committee of the Nigerian Football Federation. Uh, but then there is also some good news uh, coming through uh, from the NFF as it concerns Super Eagles coach Stephen Keshi. Um, a lot of us had expressed fears who will lead the Eagles into the 2015 Africa Cup of Nations in a week from now, in less than a month, I beg your pardon, from now, we'll be up against Rwanda. Who will lead the team? But it looks like there's good news. Uh, we'll be hopefully towards, as we go on on the show, we'll be talking to uh, an executive committee member of the Nigerian Football Federation who will be shedding light on the situation of Coach Stephen Keshi and the Super Eagles ahead of the 2015 Africa Cup of Nations. For those of you who have been asking questions, what is the latest around Stephen Keshi? You will get the lowdown um, as we go on uh, on sports tonight. Well, tonight as well, hopefully, we should be going across the sea to talk to our friend from the United States of America, from Washington. Sonny Young should be joining us on sports tonight. He's been up for a long while but we'll be happy to have him back. And then, it being a Thursday, we are also in for a swell time, domestic basketball, because uh, Yemi and Femi will be going courtside uh, towards the end of the show. So there's a lot packed into the next 50 minutes for you on Sports Tonight, and I assure you, you will enjoy every bit of it uh, if you stay with us. But let's start off the way we love to start, and that is to inform you that uh, Sports Tonight is not just about Dumnadio Konta or myself on this side of the table. Sports Tonight has grown. It has become a major part of what we do, and you have become a major part of Sports Tonight as well. And that is why you need to understand that uh, you are very key to all that we're doing on the program tonight. Without you, probably we'll just sign off the show and, and go back home. But because you are here, we have to be here. All right, so take advantage of what you have on screen and give us your opinion to issues as we raise them. Uh, on the program. Those platforms are showing on your screen on Facebook, uh, channels, iPhone Sports, of course, uh, on Twitter, at uh, channels underscore sports, and uh, you can tweet at Tony Bitway as well, which is my undo. We'll be able to read your comments real time as we go along on sports tonight uh, this Thursday. So thank you once again for joining us, and uh, uh, please stay with us all through. Doom Nodi. Um, did you stay up to watch the girls? I stayed up to watch the girls. And I wasn't disappointed. And probably I will still have to do it again. Because I thought we played exciting football. We had chances. We didn't take our chances. 
But on the average, it wasn't bad. Starting with a point of Mexico, for me, not a bad start for Nigeria. Yes, um, at this level. At this level, um, this was a team we, 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 they had dragged us into extra time, the last edition. You know, we, we you played the draw with them before? Yeah, we extra played. time, one time, and one then time. we won. That was the last Early. edition, that was mm. the quarterfinal of the mm. last edition. Mm. We had to wait to um, go by um, Desire of Manozi to skate through into the quarter, into the semi-final. So um, I'm not expecting anything different. Um, at least it's something to, it's something mm. to look up to, something that is deserved a draw, not a loss. Uh, mm. At this level, if you lose your first game in women's football, you there's every guarantee that uh, you'll, be you, chasing you, it. you'll be chasing it and mm. you'll crash out so early at this phase. For, for the four corners, good, mm. good game, but they just need to step up their game. Um, some of them had been here before. So there's no need, we, there's no point yeah. um, still struggling. A lot, of, a lot of the players in our team have been to the FIFA 20 Women's World, World Cup, Cup before, before, maybe once or twice. So, so really, we should, we, we should, we should expect a lot more from them. Especially for those who have been there before. Mm. The last and time, some of them are already playing with the Super Falcons, yes. the senior national team. So there's yes. plenty of experience. When, when we said Okwara Nuzi was there in 2010, she was there in 2012. But she stepped up again. Even mm. though we got to the quarter final, uh, semi-final, we lost to Japan. But we sh it showed, she showed that there was an improvement from 2010. That is a senior player. Yeah, she's a senior player. She showed mm. that. So and some of these girls who have been part, players, yeah. who are, we are, we are part of the 2012 edition, they should to step up their game mm. and um, mm. do something about this tournament. Mm. All right. In, in case you didn't stay up to watch, um, I'm sure by now you know the result. It ended 1-1. Nigeria forcing the Mexicans to a draw. Two beautiful goals in that game. In case you didn't stay up to watch the game uh, and you, you went to bed quite early, what we are going to be doing tonight, courtesy, of course, of Super Sports, is to bring you some highlights of Nigeria, Mexico, FIFA, Under-20 Women's World Cup. It ended 1-1. Sit back, enjoy the highlights, and then we'll come back some more on Sports Tonight. Very much a family business these days. I mentioned his father, Leonardo, who was in charge in Japan two years ago. And uh, well, you saw Leo back on the uh, bench assisting his son. There he is. There. <laughs> That's uh, Peter Dedevo, who took over the Nigerian under-20 team last November after uh, plenty of success locally in his country and with the under-17s. He has a steely determination to uh, win not just today, but indeed a whole tournament. Mexico in the red and black. Nigeria in the white with the green numbers. Well, this is actually a rerun of one of the quarterfinals from two years ago in Tokyo. That meeting went to extra time. They have to face the USA and Canada all the time. Samajic looking for the long ball over the top. Keeper out and got to it very well indeed. Danger not over yet, though. Oh, fantastic finish! Well, Chi-Chi thought she'd done it all absolutely right. But some Mexican magic in Moncton. No wonder they're applauding on the sidelines. Abasi beaten, Samajic through. And as she played it over the top, the goalkeeper realized the potential danger. She came racing out. What about this for a finish? Beating goalkeeper and defender. I suppose for uh, coaches in many countries, you know, there's a higher and fire culture where if you don't achieve the expectations, you know, you could be uh, chasing a new job very shortly. So maybe there are pressures that come with that. Mexico getting their organization sorted out defensively here. Oshwala. Bypassing Ayla. This is Njoku. Ihezu will go for this along with Santiago. The goalkeeper lost it under pressure. Fairly untypically, I have to say. Inde trying to bulldoze a path through Ignovia. Oh, fabulous! Two goals of the highest quality here. 
Osas Igbinovia, she can hardly believe it. Nigeria level just before half time. Well, they love their hockey in Canada, and that's what you call a slap shot. Just instinctive reactions from Osas Igbinovia. All right, that was how it ended, uh, ending 1-0, Nigeria, Mexico. Nigeria forcing a draw of the Mexicans. Um, I don't Let's just spend a few minutes to talk about this very quickly. The devil says he's disappointed we didn't win this game. Maybe he has a right to be disappointed because we dominated the game. We had plenty of chances to score, more chances to score than the Mexicans. And maybe he felt he should have had three points in this game instead of maybe the point that he got. Well, um, that's um, expected from a coach, knowing the kind of players in his squad, knowing um, the machinery, mm. his machinery, um, knowing the experience of some of the players. So if you expect them, um, that will overrun the Mexican. But this is women football. Look at the goal scored. You know that this is pure women football. Mm. The, the goal by the Mexican. The two goals were beautiful goals. The beautiful goals. But uh, our own goal, goal, our keeper came out thinking he had intercepted it. Uh, a goal bound move, and then so they love you, it over you, him. You, ex you expect that to happen. Um, I, I think it, well, it, it all builds on him to, to instruct the guests that the next game is very key. Mm. Because if you don't win, if you go play a draw, there's every likelihood you mm. will not win your mm. next game. Mm. And mm. this is the build up to the first goal by the Mexicans. Um, Our keeper did well. I mean, what, what should he have done? Um, um, but our recovery and of course the recovery rate um, mm, was, was, was poor. But for the Mexicans, very swift, um, sweet finish. Quick, yeah, quick finish from the, from, from the Mexicans. Ibarra. I think the girl's name Ibarra. is Ibarra. 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 The Mexican. So, um, there was nothing the goalkeeper could have done about it. Um, just needed to. Um, because, like I mentioned earlier, that this is pure women football. You mm. can see the quality of goals. You will know that any any kind of boy in an open net. The women are already complaining that guys are marginalizing. They are not marginalizing. Them. What you are saying, you say you are no, not saying the quality. No. Of, are you I'm saying I'm that saying uh, they, they, the goals are inferior to men's football? They are not, they are not inferior. You mm. will know that this kind. Of, look at the way the goal is called. Look at um, um, the way she, the recovery rate. You will know that this is um, of course. Uh, look at this recovery rate. Look <laughs> at, but that uh, was a beautiful. But it's not, it's not. It's not. It's not funny. Mm. But we just have to step up our game. The experienced players in this team must step up their game. The, guy, the girls who are going for the first time, those who played at the last Under-17 World Cup in Azerbaijan, who were going to Under-20 World Cup, yes, we expect more Some from them, right, but yeah. those who are experienced,